guys and welcome back. Today is another YouTube artist collective and what that is if you don't know what it is. It's just a group of YouTube artists where we gather together and we create traditional pieces based off a theme that anyone can vote on over at the Facebook page and I'll have a link to the Facebook page in the description. And anyone can take part in these themes. So if you'd like to try out doing one based on this theme, you can absolutely do that and hashtag it with just hashtag YTAC, I think. Yes, YouTube Artist Collective, the initials of that. And I would love to see your guys' take on this theme, but the theme is Ocean World and that's the one that won. And it's really fun because it's during the month of Mermaid. So we have lots of mermaid themed art happening right now. So it's very much on people's mind, this ocean theme. But yeah, I was really excited to get started with this one. And I wanted to think of a subject that was very specific, I guess you could say. I wanted it to have a story and a certain feeling to it. And what I wanted to focus on is I wanted to focus on some of the like myth and creepiness of the ocean. And I was brainstorming and talking things out and eventually arrived to the idea of focusing on the Bermuda Triangle of this kind of haunted concept and idea in this place. And once I came to that idea and that concept, I was really excited to start working on it because it was something that felt very in line with the type of thing that I want to do more of. So that was really helpful. And I also had a sort of concept before that of doing a large sized ocean woman, which is actually a pretty common thing in art and film, because I was thinking about how fun it would be to incorporate almost like an ocean goddess or someone that was extremely powerful looking. And I was thinking about, well, what are things and places that I can find ideas for things that have already been done so I can know what that looks like, what I want to change, what I wanted to pick that and I could think of a lot of them just right off the top of my head. There's Little Mermaid when Ursula turns giant. There's Pirates of the Caribbean. There's Moana. Uh, there's a lot of examples like that. And that's kind of fun. I love working off of something that there's already a rolling dialogue on it almost. And then I can take my own take on it and make it my own. So once I had those two combined ideas... I felt a lot more comfortable with the direction that I wanted to go and the way that I wanted to work on it. And I started sketching out thumbnails and I got a little bit stuck where I was trying to get a pose to look right. And the thing is, is that I am not going to be able to know a good pose right off the top of my head with the amount of practice that I've done. I just don't feel comfortable with that. But I knew in my head basically how I wanted her to be posed. So I took a break on sketching thumbnails out. And then I just took a video of myself posing in several different poses like that. Actually, a lot of them. And that's a great way to get a perfect reference photo if you're working off of, well, if as you should probably be working off of reference photos, is just to take a video because then you can do lots of poses very quickly. You don't have to worry about making sure that you're freezing when you're taking the actual photo or anything like that. So I just took a bunch of them on my webcam and then I was watching it over and just took really quick screen grabs of the ones that I liked and then worked off of that. And that was really just the groundwork that I needed to be able to start getting traction on this because a lot of times I can get stuck in this repeating whirlpool almost of working on thumbnails where I don't know exactly how to depict something like a specific pose like this and I just keep trying to make it work in the thumbnail phase but that's not always the solution sometimes I need to break out of that and find out what it actually looks like as surprising as that sounds but that was really all I needed to start feeling like I was moving towards the goal and this is the part where I'm getting to the color comps and I get a lot of questions on this but it's very easy what I do is I just finish the line work like normal and then I take a very brightly lit photo of the piece I take it into Photoshop I edit it so it's black and white only and then I shrink it down and print it on these pre-cut watercolor sheets with a inkjet printer and it is waterproof once it prints out and I found that once I started doing this method I've done way more color comps for each piece and I've been a lot more thoughtful about each step in each area. I used to do where I would just draw in very loose representations of the piece where I would just hand draw each one for each thumbnail that I wanted to try. And when I did that, I was a lot 
more quick to move from the very loose thumbnails onto the final piece. But now that I actually can just print more out, there's no excuse for me not to really delve in there and figure out exactly how I want the colors to be. So I've done way more color comps for each piece and I'm able to be a lot more detailed about how I'm going to execute it because I have all the details there. So this has actually really improved my process once I decided to go ahead and just dedicate some of the paper to the color the color comps themselves and dedicate the time. It really actually doesn't take that much time now that I'm used to that system, but yeah, it's really improved the quality of the colors that I am able to do once I get to the final. And I ended up doing a lot more color comps than I show in this video, but eventually I had to move on to the final piece. I ended up taking hours working on color comps because I felt so conflicted with how to execute it and what colors I wanted to use. I did several where the moon was more of this pinky red color and then it gradiated into blue. So it was really a pink, purple, blue color scheme. And while I really liked it, it's one that I tend to gravity gravitate towards all the time. And it really wasn't fitting towards the mood that I wanted. And then I had another color comp that was a lot more focused on green in the sky and then fading down into a blue. And I knew that that was the right mood, but I just couldn't quite get it to look the exact way that I wanted it to or to spark the same kind of interest. And I reworked it and reworked it, but eventually it was to the point where I decided that it was just time to move on. And that I just needed to stop overthinking it because sometimes I can just get stuck in a rut of rethinking the same thing. So I had to force myself to move on to the final piece, which was a little bit scary because I didn't feel 100% ready or confident with that. And honestly, most times I would prefer to take a break, step away from it and let myself just re-energize so that I could come back to it with fresh eyes. But it was at a point where I just... I was ready to move on and I knew that I was ready to start painting it. I just was overthinking it. And sometimes that's just the case, but because I wasn't a hundred percent, 100% sure of how I wanted to paint it and how I wanted to layer everything, I decided to go very slowly, which is something I should do all the time anyways, but I wanted to layer it up and build it up so that I wasn't suddenly in the deep end of something that I no longer wanted it to look like that. But that's a thing that I'm trying to get a little bit better at with my workflow is doing flats overall the whole piece to start building it up all together a little bit more. And that's something that I tried to do here. I knew that I wanted the water to be gradiated from darker up to a little bit lighter at the surface and I wanted her to be greener than the water so I went ahead and I did this graded wash with the water and then I filled her in with a really light wash of green so I could just start creating this baseline to start working off of it and visually I'd be able to see where the colors are going to be placed and I could start working off of that rather than detailing one area and having that not match the other areas especially in value. And now some of the things that I wish that I could do better and I would like to practice more on. Uh, the first thing is I wish that I had done a little bit better job rendering the way that light was hitting the water and the way that it's all reflective underneath. I think that I could have done a lot better job showing it, especially the way that the light could have hit this figure that's below the water. Also, the way that her hand is breaking out of the surface, I could have rendered that a little bit more realistically and made it look a little bit more convincing what was happening there, but that's something that I would really like to practice more of how water looks and how to paint it because I am really interested in that and doing a water-based pictures. Uh, that's the first one. The second one is the area in the sky with the boat and this area where you could see through the water into the sky. I uh, kept adding and adding and adding because I was trying to correct past mistakes. And eventually I got to this point that I do like where it's dark and it has these stars. And eventually I had to add a few extra little almost holes in the water to represent the sky so that it balanced it out. I like the path that I finally ended up at, but if I had been more thoughtful about where I was going to end up from the very beginning, I could have rendered this much better and had the details more correct. So while I ended up in a place that I liked, I could have showed it a lot better if I had been more thoughtful about that. And that is it for today's theme. Again, if you want to participate, the theme is Ocean World, and you can hashtag that with 
Y-T-A-C. And I would love to see what you guys are doing. But as usual, I have the original available, just like everyone else who took part in the YouTube Artist Collective. So if you'd like to own this painting, I'll have a link in the description as well as in the end card. And it will have a link to everyone else in YouTube Artist Collective that took part in today's theme down in the description. So you can see all of the different takes on this theme, which I think is really cool. That's my favorite part about this, is seeing what everyone else did. Uh, but I will also have prints of this available as well at my art shop. So yeah, I uh, really love this one, actually. I fought with it but eventually it turned into something that i did like so that's always nice but yeah thank you so much for watching i do normally post on wednesdays and saturdays and i will see you guys at my next one